I want to show you two of my favorite ways to create chromatic aberration inside a DaVinci Resolve Fusion. First, I want to show you a simple and stylistic design that is great for stuff like motion graphics. Then, I want to take a look at a bit more advanced design that's really good for stuff like visual effects. Plus, I have a way you can make both of these in just a few seconds with a new tool I built for Fusion. We'll talk more about that later. First, I want to talk about what chromatic aberration really is, and more importantly, when you should use it. It's not just a video game effect or something that you see people add way too much of to their color grades, though both of those are true. Chromatic aberration is something that happens when light passes through a lens. If you've seen those cool photos of light going into a prism and then being split into like a rainbow, that's basically what's happening in here. The lens of your camera is trying to take all of this light in and focus it just on the small area of your sensor. As you go farther away from the center of your image, the light is going to need to be refracted more to get onto the sensor, and as a result, it's going to have more distortion, and that distortion is called a chromatic aberration. That's why whenever you see it, it's really only present around the edges of your image. And all of that's important to understand because it isn't something you should just throw on everything and crank to 11. But adding just a little bit of it can match your visual effect shot or 3D render to your camera. You just need to make sure you're not adding more than was originally present in the image. The exception to this is if you want to use it more stylistically in stuff like motion graphics or like a trippy dream sequence. We'll talk more about how to do that later on in the video, but for now, let's take a look at how to make these simple methods. Inside of DaVinci Resolve, after this media in, what I want to do is add in two transform modes. So I'm going to add in one, then do shift space and add in a second one. Clicking on the first one, I'm going to press F2 and then rename this to be red. Click on the second one, F2, and rename this one to be blue. Now, under the red transform, we're going to come to the center X and Y, right click on it, go to modify with, and then choose vector result. If I click on the modifiers tab, we've added in this new modifier that lets us offset the image by a distance, and then use the angle to choose which direction it's actually going to go. Let's bring the distance down and just keep it at something really subtle. Now we need to fix this edge because we're seeing some transparent pixels. While it's not going to be perfect, we can come to the Tools tab, come down to Edges, and set this to be Mirror. What that's going to do is take the image and then just kind of duplicate it along itself, flipping it back and forth, so we have seamless transitions at the end. Now, moving over to the blue channel, we're going to right-click on the center X and Y, come down to Connect To, and connect it to that same modifier. Now, this blue transform is doing the same thing that the red transform is doing. We want to do the opposite, so let's come down to the Invert Transform, turn that on, and then we also want to set the edges to be Mirror. Alright, so the red node is sending it to the right, and the blue node is sending it to the left. Now we need to isolate which channels these nodes can actually affect. And you can do that by going to the Settings tab, and then turning off the red and green channels for the blue one, and then under the red one, we're going to turn off the green and blue channels. Now, we have this chromatic aberration chroma shift type effect. And if we go up to the modifiers tab, we can take this distance to change its intensity, and then use the angle to change the direction that it's actually offsetting it. This control is extremely sensitive to move around, so when you're moving it, hold down control, and that gives you some fine tuning over its position. If you don't know exactly how much of this to use, always lean on the more subtle side. But for this chromatic aberration, we have a big issue, and that's the fact that it has the same intensity across the entire image. It's not getting more intense along the edges. I like to use this method anytime I'm doing something more stylistically, like I used it in my liquid glass effect that I did a video on a few months ago. I've also used it inside of my Whip 3D camera tool, which is a cool 3D camera movement, and it gives it like a pixelated effect. That's part of the editor collection if you want to check that out. You could come down and put a mask into here so that way it doesn't do it in the middle, but it's not quite realistic because it just fades the effect off rather than actually changing its intensity. Before moving on to the next one, I've been working in a pack called Fusion Utilities that has a bunch of macros for stuff exactly like this. Instead of setting up this chromatic aberration every single time, I can just come after the media in, do chromatic aberration, I'm going to grab the simple variant, press enter, and that's going to add the same effect in, and in the inspector I just have these two controls so I can easily change the intensity. The nice thing about this pack is every tool, you can double click on it to open it up and see how it was made, as well as click on the nodes to get full customization of all of their controls. There's already more than 15 tools in this pack and I'm going to keep adding to it over time. This pack also includes the more advanced chromatic aberration, which, as you can see, gets more intense as we get along the edges. In the inspector, I can change stuff like the intensity of it, I can customize that fall off, how intense that is, as well as soften it to blur all that chromatic aberration together. I'm going to show you how to set all of this up for yourself, but make sure to check out Fusion Utilities, link down below. Alright, so to set up the advanced chromatic aberration, we're first going to start with an ellipse mask, and we're going to use this to define the area that we actually want the chromatic aberration to show up. So in the inspector, I'm going to select invert, so that way it's just around the edges, and we're going to take the size of this, make it quite a bit wider, and then scale this up until the edges go off the screen. Now back in the inspector, I want to set the soft edge to be something like 0.7, and you're going to have to type that number in, but this will give us a really nice falloff across the entire image. 
Now to actually apply this to the image, after the media in, we're gonna do shift space and add in a displace node. Then we can take the output of the mask and put this into the green input of the displace node. Now in the inspector, I can use the refraction strength to offset the image and distort it, but this is not exactly what we want. We wanna to go to the settings tab and isolate it so it's only affecting the red channel. And now we have this nice chromatic aberration that's only around the edges, and we can use this refraction strength to change its intensity. Now to really bring this home, after the displace node, to shift space, type in directional blur, add this in. It does nothing by default, so we need to come up to the type, set this to be zoom, and then grab the length and then drag this up until we get just a nice soft roll off of all this chromatic aberration. And just like that, we've made our own chromatic aberration, and the three main controls to customize this are gonna be the soft edge and the ellipse, the refraction strength in the displace, and then the length in the blur. Of course, instead of jumping between three nodes to customize all that, you can just use the chromatic aberration tool from Fusion Utilities, which has all of them neatly organized in the inspector. As one bonus way to create chromatic aberration, you can do shift space and add in the prism blur node. This one adds a softness to the image because it, it blurs it, so we want to come in here and bring the blur strength all the way down, then you can use the aberration distance as well as the strength to actually change the intensity of the aberration. Now personally, I don't like the look of this one compared to the other ones, but it's there if you want to use it. So those are my favorite ways to create chromatic aberration. If you guys have a different method, let me know down in the comments. Also, make sure to check out Fusion Utilities at the link below to speed up your Fusion workflow. I have a tutorial for each one of the tools, and the fact that you can open up any of the tools means it's a great way to learn more about Fusion while saving yourself time. So if you guys have any other questions for me or want to learn how to build another effect like chromatic aberration, let me know. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.